Hello and welcome back to our Breath of the Wild challenge run. In the last episode, last episodes, plural, we uh, got through the Gerudo Wasteland, did all the content we needed up there, and then actually backtracked to Gerudo Desert to finish up the bit of story content that I forgot with Riju, which was just getting the chests uh, from Urbosa's chests, and the Great Fairy Fountain at the edge of the map. Um, but we are actually ready in this episode to spin for a whole new region. Um, what penalty did I set myself? Um, I sacrificed two hearts. So I went to the essence trader because I, I spun for Hateno in the next section in the next episode. So I spun for Hateno. I went there and I gave up two hearts to the, to the essence trader. So I had to regain those hearts back. Um, hopefully that's a good enough punishment. I couldn't think of anything better that would have a meaningful impact so that's the best i could do but we are officially ready to spin for a new region once again so let's go pull the, spin, the spinner up and as i meant discussed last time we are getting to the point where there's only really aside from lake farron and ridgeland those three areas the rest of these these are five areas are all story regions so i'm hoping 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 that we will spin a story region could it be Dueling Peaks? I'd love for it to be Dueling Peaks. I'd love to finally talk to Impa. So let's get going. Spin that wheel. Did it spin? Spin wheel. There we go. It's a Bantha. Okay, you know what? That's fine. That is Vameto. That's what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and get rid of you. And let's place a big fat pin on this tower right there. Well, can I not place a, t a pin there? Fine, well, we'll place a pin there. And I, I'm perfectly happy with that. I am perfectly happy with that. That is all I could have asked for. So let us go with that, hit you. Um, real quick, yeah, that's fine. Also, in the last uh, batch of episodes, I finally, for the first, oh shit. I did that wrong. Completed my first ever major piece of strength. I got through it. I was so proud of myself. It was hard. I didn't I didn't expect to win, but I did. So we are going to make a not a B line, but as close to a B line straight to to Bantha as we can, but I'm gonna go the long way around as opposed to reclimbing all those cliffs and stuff. Because A, climbing is tedious, takes forever, and even though I finally have an additional strip of stamina. Because I was not allowing myself to get stamina uh, wheel until I had 13 hearts. Right, at least I didn't have to trek through the entire continent. Absolutely. Positive thinking. Where are you going? Um, no, where are you going, dude? Whoa, hey, where'd you... Okay, well, apparently we're trekking through the desert. Damn it. I, I honestly lost my train of thought. Oh, no, I don't want to climb over the mountains and go through the, the snowy areas again, because I have had enough fighting with frigid temp temperatures. At least once we get to Tabantha, we can buy the uh, the gear that will keep us warm. So that is exciting. That is very, very exciting. And as I said, I finally have another portion of stamina. And for the foresee, how many uh, spirit orbs do we have? One. Okay. And for the foreseeable future, until we get a second, um, a second full wheel, that will be what we're increasing. Unless, of course, I have to forfeit hard to for some reason. I'm hoping that won't happen, but y you never know. You never know. Oh, but it's so exciting. More story content, finally. Finally. Um... Are you excited for the- Yes, I'm excited for the sequel's release. Are you kidding me? I cannot wait for Tears of the Kingdom. It is all I want in this life. Like, Legends Arceus and Pokemon Scarlet Violet did a good job distracting me for a while. And I'm not done playing Scarlet. Um, I'm just taking a break from it. But uh, I am just ready for that uh, sweet, sweet shit. Tears of the Kingdom. <laughs> I need it. I want it. I'm honestly shocked 
and appalled that they haven't uh, released any more information at all. I thought for sure we would have something after the last week or so, but I was wrong. I'll just make a slight tweak there. There we go. Um, go ahead and put those pants on for now. And put that on, I guess. Since we're leaving the desert. But yeah, I cannot wait for Tears of the Kingdom. Um, it's really all... I Don't you even joke about it being delayed, dude. You know how upset I'll be? I, I would... I, I don't know if I would, if I would boycott the rest of this playthrough, but I would certainly not be a happy lad. Um, although, speaking of this playthrough, it's looking like... And I, I checked... This might end up being almost a hundred episodes long by the time I'm through with it. Where is Beetle? There he is. I'm hoping it won't take that long. Apparently there's another pl Let's Play that's 150 episodes deep, and I definitely don't want to go that long. Wow! But, uh... Ta -ta! <laughs> I'm not going to have this done... Oh, he doesn't have anything for me. I'm not going to have this game done nearly as quick as I thought. I thought I'd be done in 40, 50... You know, 56 episodes, and that'd be it, but... I think we're approaching the, the 50th episode mark. I mean, a quality game, what could they do to make it worse? Breath of the Wild is so close to being, in my opinion, a perfect game. They could only, you know, like, what, 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 could, what, could, what could they do to make, to, to take away from it, take away from the quality? Oh wait, I probably don't need this anymore. So let's go ahead and put on this. Man, my I've been fighting a really bad migraine for a few days, and my neck is so stiff and sore, and I have no idea why. And I'm just I'm kind of just in general pain in my head, neck, shoulder. Hmm. <sighs> On the other plus side, <clears throat> once we get through Tabantha, we'll be done with the western portion of uh, Hyrule. Lag, bugs, being... Look, look. Game Freak might be able to get away with pushing an unfinished, broken, buggy mess like Scarlet and Violet. Um, I, I think... I think Nintendo has proven, by virtue of releasing Breath of the Wild, that they're willing... That they're gonna make sure the game is polished and, and good. I refuse to accept. I refuse to believe anything else. And I know, I know it's, it's kind of. I'm trying to think of what the word for it here is. I it's kind of an overplayed expression, but like, Breath of the Wild really is kind of the golden. Um. What am I trying to say here? It is kind of the golden standard when it comes to Switch Switch games. Um, this was a launch title for the Switch, and it still looks, plays, and performs beautifully five years later. Um, there's no, there's really no excuse for any game to perform as bad as Scarlet and Violet does. And I, I refuse to even to even uh, entertain the notion that Tears of the Kingdom will not be fantastic. Yeah, I generally agree with that, that, that sentiment. Scarlet and Violet were not ready for release. As much as I love the games, as I, I, I do, I love them. I actually just finished a second playthrough in Spanish. That way I could get, uh, provide foreign dittos for people who want to mods the brief for shinies. Um, as much as I love the games, they were, they are, they're, they're not, they're not, they're not done. They're not ready to be out in the hands of the public. And yeah, I'm sure they're going to push updates and patches to make it better. But I'm just tired. Listen, I am so sick and tired of this trend nowadays that 
now that we have games that support patches and updates, developers, not just Game Freak, not Nintendo, but it seems every developer is happy pushing out an unfinished product and saying, well, we'll just give it a day one update. Or, well, it's not perfect, but we'll continue working on it. Um, you know, it's like, oh, well, let's just get the game out and then work out the bugs and iron out the kinks. And I'm just like, no. Delay the game to make it the best it is. The best it possibly can be. Um, and it's... It really frustrates me. It re and, and Pokemon is one of those games that no matter how bad it is, it will... It, it'll, it'll print money. And people, myself included, because I did this too, will pick it up day one and can say, it, you know, you, 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 you speak with your wallet. You vote with your wallet. And as long as there are people like me who keep giving Game Freak second chances and buying any Pokemon game that they put out, they'll continue releasing these these unfinished subpar, not, not subpar, that's not a great word. Sorry about it's not subpar. But half finished and buggy messes are, are true. And as long as there are people like me who keep supporting that, 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 uh, you know, that development cycle, it's not going to change. And so, yeah, I mean, and I recognize it makes me a giant hypocrite to, uh, complain about it when I'm part of the problem. Um, but Scarlet and Violet, and I, I said this during Legends, if Scarlet and Violet burned me, I was going to finally stop giving Game Freak the benefit of the doubt. Um, because Brilliant Diamond, so, well, let's back there even further. I didn't like Sun. Let's backtrack even further. I didn't like Black and White when it came out. Let's backtrack even further, okay? Let's just let's just let's just start with when it got bad. I didn't like Diamond and Pearl. I hate Diamond and Pearl. To this day, I hate Diamond and Pearl. Platinum was okay. It, it fixed a lot of problems, but it didn't fix that it was still Diamond and Pearl. Um, and then I did I didn't like Black and White. I hated Black and White. Not as bad as Diamond and Pearl, but I hated them enough that I didn't finish them. And then I love black and white too. Couldn't tell you why. Couldn't tell you what the difference is, but I, I just I hate them. Or I loved I love them. What is this region right here? This is Ridgeland. Okay. Um. Couldn't tell you why I like black and white too so much. Besides white curium, I love white curium. But I just did not like black and white. Black and white two fixed Unova and redeemed it. And then. I loved, in my opinion, they're still the second best games, X and Y. I loved X and Y. And Oros was really good. Because I, I like Ruby Sapphire Ball. They're not my favorite games. They're kind of in the middle of the pack for me. But I loved X and Y, and I really enjoyed Omega Ruby Napa Sapphire. And I was very sad we didn't get a Z version. But that's, you know, neither here nor there at this point. And then Sun and Moon came out, and... I had never had this experience before the Pokemon game. I had never not enjoyed a Pokemon game so much that I stopped playing it the, the same night it came out. Um, the night Sun and Moon launched, me, Alejandro, and a handful of our other friends, we all went to GameStop for their midnight release, right? Because back then they always had midnight releases for Pokemon because those were, you know, those were, those were console sellers. And so we were all excited for, for Sun and Moon and we all got our copies and then we all got our cars and met back up at Ahap down the road so we could have dinner and play the games together, right? We all, we all, this is around the time we met Niall and Nick and all them, right? We all found Sun and Moon just the beginning. And this is notorious. Sun and Moon is notorious for how bad its first couple hours are. We were all so underwhelmed and disappointed by the beginning of Sun and Moon that we collectively agreed just to everyone go home and play the games on our own and reconvene at a later date to, like, do battles and stuff. Where um, in X and Y, you know, me, Alejandro, and some, you know, friends, we sat down at, at a restaurant and we played those, we played those games for hours. Um, we had so much fun. And then Sun and Moon was just awful. And, I mean, it wasn't a bad, it was still better than Diamond and Pearl, still better than Black and White. Um... But I just really didn't like Sun and Moon. The, the entire first island is just awful. Um, I have a new appreciation for it now. Having gone back and replayed it in the last year, I, I have a new appreciation for it than I did before. 
but it was just so, so bad. And they, there were things about it I didn't... There were things about it I really hated. For starters, there was some things like... Some of the Z-Stones were exclusive to timed events and you could never get them again. And then they drip-fed the Mega Stones as well. And one, if you didn't get them from the original distributions, you didn't get them at all. Well, that's not true. I think they had a secondary uh, event where they gave them away. But they, these were things where they were locked behind... Game Freak's generosity events. And I just, I didn't like Sun and Moon for the longest time. They were just the newest Pokemon games, and I didn't care for them. And I thought at that, that was the point where I really considered maybe I just don't like Pokemon anymore. And then Ultra Sun and Moon came out, and as far as done as I was with Gen 7, I thought, well, these look interesting. They look just interesting enough that I think I'll try them. So I got Ultra Sun day one. And even though. I, it's largely the same game. There was enough different about it, and enough was improved that I, that they, that it, it they didn't necessarily redeem Gen Seven, but they saved Gen Seven. And I love Ultra Sun. I like Ultra Sun. So that was kind of where it stood for a long time. I, I, I liked Ultra Sun. I liked Pokemon, um, but I, I was really still kind of just burnt out and disappointed by the series as a whole. And then Let's Go came out, and I'm not a Gen 1-er, but I grew, my first games were, you know, Red and Blue, and it, it's hard to argue with a Gen 1 remake. It's, a, it's just tried and true, you know. It works. So, I, I enjoyed it for what it was. You know, just another Gen 1 game. Um... I was more excited by the concept of a, of a, of a sub-series of main title, main series games. Because um, I'm like, oh, well, if we get Let's Go Kanto, maybe we'll get Let's Go, Go Johto. And Johto Gen 2 is even today my favorite, favorite in the whole series. Um, so I like Let's Go based on what it, the potential it could have for the future. And then Sword and Shield came out. Hold on a second. Um... Discussing how Pokemon has gotten away with selling. Yes. I still really love X and Y. I agree with that 100%. Um, and that's fair. I was very close to that point myself with Sun and Moon. Um, if, I, if I hadn't gone out on a limb and tried Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, I would still probably hate Sun and Moon. Um, but Sword and Shield came out. Sword and Shield came out and just based not on the cover legends, but on the logos themselves. The sword with the dog head and the, the shield with the dog head. Just based on those. Just based on those, I thought these were stupid as hell. New Diamond and Pearl. It's the second time that I was... Yeah, yeah. I'm getting, I'm getting to that. I'm getting there, I promise. So just a notion. I'm like, okay, there's going to be some kind of sword dog and shield dog. And every, you know, everyone knew what the, the, star, the legends were going to be based on just that. And then we saw them. We saw Zaishi and we saw Zamazenta, and I thought they were the some of the ugliest fucking Pokemon ever. So ugly, so stupid. And I was not excited at all. Not excited at all. Not even a bit. Um But then the rumors started, you know, floating around like they always do, like, oh well Mega Evolution won't be in the game, but there'll be the new armor evolution, which is basically Mega Evolution, but Pokemon get armor instead. And I'm like, okay, that could be cool. That that from a competitive standpoint, someone who likes competitive, I'm like, okay, that could be cool. You know, we've got Megas, we got Megas, we got Z moves, and now we got armor evolutions. That's really cool. And then that rumor got turned out to be complete crap. Um, so fine, whatever. I, I I lived through the disappointment. It was fine. But then I got the games. I got the games, and yes, I will agree that. The gym leaders, the characters themselves, were interesting. They were probably the most interesting part of the of the entire game. But the story was just such a non-entity. It was a big, fat, nothing burger. Right? And... The story was just a giant nothing burger. And... Do you have zap arrows for me? No. And it was so transparent and obvious who the boss was, or who the big bad guy was. 
And I just, I didn't enjoy the games. I did not enjoy the games. The region was just okay. It was a sewer linear region. And the wild area did not pan out um, the way they were trying to push it. Um, they were trying to, you know, present this as this huge open area you could explore. And it turned out just to be a very small portion of the game, you know? And yes, the DLC improved it a little bit. The DLC definitely helped. Um, I didn't mind the uniforms. I didn't mind the uniforms. I thought the customization in that department was fine. Not as good as X and Y. I still think X and Y had peak trainer customization, um, even today. But I didn't mind the uniforms. Um, we're almost to the border. But Sword and Shield were just such base sword and shield were just such boring, forgettable, underwhelming experiences that I once again start to consider that maybe I just don't like Pokemon anymore. Maybe I just don't like Pokemon anymore. And then the DLC came out, like I said, it kind of saved it. It especially the second half of the DLC, the, the Tundra redeemed it quite a bit. But it was still as of right now, Sword and Shield. The whole package rates as my th third least favorite games in the, in, the, in the series. So, you know, just take that for what it is. Um, so, again, I, I went through a period where I'm like, oh, okay, maybe I just don't like Pokemon anymore. Um, and then the day came. We got Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, and Legends Arceus announced on the same day. And for as much as I hate Gen 4... Okay. I don't like the Pokemon, for most of them. I don't like most of the Pokemon introduced in Gen 4. I don't like their characters. Uh, Team Plasma is a fucking joke to me. Um, the story, the pacing of the story is awful. It's the worst I've ever experienced. And I, 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 I say this a lot. Diamond and Pearl are the Final Fantasy VII of the Pokemon universe. They're overhyped, overrated, and I don't understand why they get as much love as they do. But Diamond and Pearl came out, and for as much as I hate Gen 4, the one thing I really, really, really loved about Gen 4... How am I not over the... Whatever. I need to be going this way now. The one thing I really, really loved about Gen 4 was the physical geography of the region. I loved the region. Like... The mountain splitting the center and just all of that. I love that part. I love that part. And so I'm like, okay, I'm a little excited to replay, to play Diamond and Dora, Dora Diamond and Shining Pearl just to see how the games are going to look in 3D, right? And then, same trailer, same day, it reveals the really ugly top down chibi graphics, right? Right? And that just ruined any anticipation I had for it. Any anticipation. And I thought for a long time, I'm like, well, maybe this isn't a remake. Maybe this is Pokemon Let's Go Sinnoh, right? And if it had been branded that way, maybe it wouldn't have bothered me so much. But no, these were full-on, full-on remakes. Um, and they were almost one-for-one, one. Like, aside from a few additions. They were almost one-for-one one remakes. And they didn't include any of the Platinum content, like... Omega Ruby Apple Software included some Emerald content. Fire Red Leaf Green included, you know, all, all the remakes included a little bit of content from the third version. Um, and Brilliant Time and Shining Pearl were just bad games. And not just because I don't want Diamond and Pearl, but because they came out, just like Scarlet and Violet, a buggy, broken mess. And yes, I got the games day one. I got the games day one because I'm like, it's Pokemon. And I had started content creation at this point. So I'm like, I got to get it just for the sake of content creation. And I did a Let's Play of it. And I didn't enjoy it at all. I did not enjoy it. I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it, but I didn't enjoy it. But Legends Arceus was, I'm like, was for me the the silver lining. I'm like, I just got to get through to Legends Arceus. That's all I wanted was that open world Sinnoh region. Because again, I love the geography, right? I love the region itself. So all I wanted was Legends Arceus. And... Then the other shoe drops, and it turns out that it's not an open world game. It's not. It's open region, open area, and the areas are, are massive. They're big. Don't get me wrong. I, even now, I, I'm fine with what we got. But that was the one thing that that took Legends from being a 10 out of 10 game to like a 9 or an 8 or a 9. 
the other thing that's that kind of lowered the score, which is how many research tasks you have to do to 100% your your centuries, but that's a different discussion. Um, and so I enjoyed Legends for what it is. I was playing it and still playing it all the way up to Scarlet and Violet's release. I haven't played it since then, but I do plan to go back to it because I enjoy it more than Scarlet and Violet in a lot of ways. And so I, I was, again, on the cusp. I'm like, well, I still like Pokemon because uh, Legends Arceus proves that they still have some, you know, they still have something like redeeming qualities. And then Scarlet and Violet came out and I was super excited for those. It got my, it got me hyped again. It got me super excited. Everything about it was looking good. Um, I thought the legendaries looked a little goofy, but they grew on me. And it was a true open world game. And I was so excited. And then, as you heard, Scarlet and Violet turned out to be buggy, broken messes, just like Brody Diamond Shining Pearl. And I had said in the months leading up to their release that if these games weren't basically the Breath of the Wild of Pokemon, that I was going to stop giving Game Freak the benefit of the doubt. I was going to stop being a day one purchaser, and I was going to be much more reserved in my in, in my purchases and in my opinion of, of, of the company. And yes, while I do love Scarlet and Violet, I think they are they're not my favorites, but I think they are the best games in the series. The condition, the state in which they released it, unacceptable. And so for as much as I love the games, I, I just cannot, I cannot, in good conscience anymore, support Game Freak's uh, uh, development decisions. So at this point, I will no longer be a day one purchaser. I will no longer be, you know, like, unless they reveal something just fucking like stellar, something amazing that completely changes my perspective, I'm kind of just fed up with Pokemon. I'm playing and enjoying Scarlet. And I've already burnt out on Scarlet. That's the crazy thing. I've already burnt out on the game. Um, oh, no, I don't have a thousand rupees to give you. I'll have to come back here. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm already fed up. Not fed up, sorry. Burnt out. I'm hoping by the time uh, Ranked Season 2 starts, I'll, I'll be in the mood to play again. But the fact that I'm already burnt out it does not bode well. So, as of right now, I'm just kind of done giving Game Freak the benefit of the doubt with, with their games. I'm going to just play by ear from now on and hope that we get good stuff. Obviously, well, not obviously, because they said that if if there was a high enough demand for Let's Go sequels, we'd get them. And if we get Johto in basically any capacity, I'm, it's going to be hard for me not to, not to make that a day one purchase. Um... Like, obviously, we have the inevitable Gen 5 remakes coming up, and I don't... I, I, I went back, actually, literally just this last week, I, I finished replaying Pokemon White. White 1, the first white version. And like Sun and Moon, I have a new appreciation for it, but I still really don't care much for it, you know? It, it's an okay game. Um, I still think White 2 blows out of the water and everyone. But I don't foresee them incorporating what Black 2, White 2 into the Gen 5 remakes at all. So, as of right now, I also don't... I, I just... I don't see myself picking up the Gen 5 remakes when... If and when they happen. Um, like I said, unless something just mind-blowing happens, as of right now, they're going to be... Maybe not a skip, but they're not going to be a day one purchase for me. I'll wait... See how other people think of it. See how the game looks and plays, and if it's a buggy fucking mess again. And if it looks good, I'll probably get it. But as of right now, I'm not getting a day one. Um, a lot of people think we're getting Kalos DLC in Scarlet and Violet, and I would love that because, like I said, X and Y are my second favorite games in the series. And if we get that DLC, that's a instant purchase. I'll buy that DLC right away. But again, when we get X and Y remakes. I don't know if those will be, as much as I want them to be, I don't know that those will be a day one purchase for me. I don't know that those will be a day one purchase, as much as I want them to be. So, it's just, it's just so hard for me to, in good faith, um, 
trust it just I, I don't trust Game Freak anymore. That's the short and long of it. I don't trust Game Freak anymore. I don't agree. And even with Scarlet and Violet, pretty much as I liked them, they made a lot of design decisions that are just fucking awful. They took so many steps backwards. Like, here's how I describe it. When the new gen comes out, they choose one or two mechanics that they polish really well, that they do super well on. And in this case, it was the terrestrial, the terrestrializing, and the open world. They did wonderful in those. I love the mechanic, the terrestrial mechanic, and I love the open world. Um, but everything else is trash. They, they, all the quality of life features that they improve, just in PC management, just in the, in the management part of the game, the PC is so much slower. You don't have the options you used to have. It's it just, it's slow. And the battles are slow. And just, it's hard not to be overly critical. So. So that's, that's where I am with Pokemon right now. I, I, I'm very in, I'm very in the middle, leaning towards feeling negative about I've always thought Black and White has always been the Final Fantasy VII. No, see, I, they, they also get an unreasonable amount of hype that I don't get. Um, but nowhere near as the level of Shadow of the Church. Love Black and White. Exactly. I, I didn't care for Black and White. I didn't finish Black and White originally. But I loved White too. Black and White too. I hate Let's Go. It, it really depends. I didn't... I don't like the physical catching mechanics with, the, with having to fling it. All the hunter loves it. Um, and in this fucking thing, this thing, this thing right here, this sixty dollar paperweight. What did I get that for? It's compatible with one fucking game. They're like, oh yeah, it'll be compatible with games in the future. You could send Pokemon to it in Sword and Shield, but you can't use a controller. It has no functionality outside of those games. I wait. Uh, it's it's also a Pokemon Go Plus for Pokemon Go because you know I don't already have wherever my Pokemon Go Plus is. Where's my Pokemon Go Plus? Anyway, I have a Pokemon Go Plus as well, but I didn't need another one. So I'm very upset with that. That's the last time I buy a, a peripheral from them. I hate EXP share. Um, yeah, I, I, I think the EXP share should be a toggle. -able. It should have been like it was before. You can turn it on and off. Permanent XP share is stupid, and I don't care for it, but whatever. I've literally spent this whole episode ranting and raving about... Mostly ranting about Pokemon. That's really funny to me. Anyway, back to Zelda content. We are finally here at the Tabantha Tower, and our target in the next episode is going to be... That... Where is it? That giant bird in the sky. But for now, it is just about time to end the episode. So I'm going to do a save, throw down a save, and say goodbye here. In the next episode, we will make our way to Rito Village and up to the Divine Beast. So until then, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you later.